Welcome to the Inclusive Ship Show, the place to get practical insights to make inclusion happen in the corporate world. I am Thais Conform, your host, and today I'm absolutely honored and delighted to have here with me Andrew Mullen. Andrew Mullen is the Vice President of Field Sales for Coca-Cola European Partners, Great Britain. Anne has joined Coca-Cola in 2000 and has held a variety of positions in different functions and different geographies. She has uh, been in strategic planning, sales, public affairs, sustainability, business transformation, and she's worked in France, in the Benelux, Northern Europe, and at European level as well. Anne is a Belgian, currently living in London. And Anne is one of the most inspirational business leaders I've ever met. And she is the greatest inclusion sponsor and champion you can ever dream of. So Anne, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Ty. Welcome to you. Okay. And to begin with, then, can you tell us, you know, how do you, what's your definition of inclusion and diversity? Um, it's not an easy one. There's one definition I, I, I recently heard, um, which says is diversity is the ingredient and inclusion is the recipe. And that's one I really, really liked um, because I'm a bad cook. So maybe uh, it talks to me even more. Um, I think you need to combine both. Absolutely. And, and what's your killer argument to convince people about the value of inclusion and diversity? But I think we, we live in a world which starts to be even more complex than in the past. Um, we've got so many transformations from a digital perspective. Everything's more global um, and the pace of change is accelerating. So if you want to keep up as a business with all that change and continue to see the opportunities, we need people with different eyes and different viewpoints to master that complexity and to understand that complexity. Um, so my killer argument is always, it just makes business sense. You know, you will have a better business, you'll make more profit, it's a more fun environment to work in, but you can't do it anymore without the diversity. You can't do it, you can't solve the problems anymore of the future. I love the fun part. It's also <laughs> about having fun. Often Absolutely. we forget about, you know, the fun part. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm, I'm such a believer in diversity. I've got an extremely diverse team. I've got about 10 people working for me, and they're all so different, um, which means it's, it's very tiring for me as a leader because we need to keep all the opinions in the room and, and balance everything. But it's such a good fun, and it helps each other to develop, to see things from a different perspective and come up with really creative solutions for any issue we face. Um, and we always leave with a big smile. We're very tired, but we always leave with a really big smile. So absolutely, there's a lot of fun in inclusion and diversity. And what is the most, so you said that already you have a very diverse team, but in terms of initiatives, have you, what is the most, how did you get there actually? What's the most effective thing that you did to get at this point of diversity and inclusion with the team yes with the team what's the most effective initiative you've ever taken to promote inclusion and diversity uh, I, I think you know inclusion and diversity are very linked so you you can work on diversity but if you don't work on inclusion you will never have a diverse opinion on the table because the diverse people will not be able to speak up or be themselves um, so the biggest thing I did is I took a few people out. I took a few tough decisions. I took a few people out of the team when I came in that were not at all inclusive. Uh, I made it really clear. Um, I told in one of my first meetings, I said, are we all going to have an opinion or I'm just going to put a lot of mirrors on the chairs and I'm just going to talk to myself. Um, so those who don't have an opinion and don't share what they're thinking, even if it's very different, um, they should leave the room. And that was a really big statement and they still refer to it. Um, and um, we build, we work a lot on respect for each other, and uh, so we invite each other's opinion in a meeting, um, and we'll also listen to each other uh, and build on each other and build that trust, so people feel um, respected um, 
and easy to share what they're thinking, even if they completely disagree, which, which is often a really good moment in a meeting if they all disagree because there's something in the middle that we need to solve. And that's the moments I really, really like. But having the right people on the table, role modeling it from the top is really critical. Not allowing, you know, behavior that is not inclusive. That's the, that's the big one. Calling it out, being vocal about it and getting it out of the meeting room, getting it out of the team. Wow, yeah, that was a big statement. Yeah. Um, in, but, you know, getting, uh, you, you need so, so much courage as well as a leader to invite all those different perspectives, to, you know, in the room. How do you reconcile? You know, I guess many people, the reason why they, they don't invite so many different perspectives or opinions is because they don't, uh, once they have them, what, are they supposed to do with that you know, as, yeah. as a leader? Do you have any... any yeah, th th there is a that? thing that it's, it's very easy to lead a team of equals because they will all think the same. They will all, you don't need a lot of words. They will all comply with what you're saying and they will all follow you. And that's not difficult to, to lead. But leading a very diverse team asks a lot of energy uh, and asks a lot of patience. But every single time, the solution will be better than when you would have done it by yourself. Um, there will be people with a, a different cultural background bringing in new perspectives, different gender background bringing new perspectives. We have young, we've got older, we've got long experience, short experience. Um, so every single time it, it's just a better solution. And in the end, it makes my life easier because if I create an environment where everyone gives his opinion, I'm not um, leading blind, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. they will speak up and they will give me all the perspectives. And then it's, it's just being comfortable with the decision making and being open to the whole team is we bring all the opinions in and now we'll decide as a team what the direction is or what the decision is and then we'll go out of the meeting as one team at least we discussed all the angles um so the decision making process is difficult but it's necessary okay it's a, yeah it leads to a better decision yes mm -hmm. absolutely and better results better results and do you have any Maybe any stories, you know, concrete stories of how you came up with a better solution thanks to, you know, this uh, diverse of inputs. In yeah, there's so, there's, there's, there's so many, there's so many. Um, I'm thinking quickly. <laughs> um, we, um, we, we, we did a, a really big change program um, in this business um, and definitely in the area I'm, I'm leading. Um, we had a 70% uh, productivity increase and we doubled and tripled all our commercial KBIs over the last 18 months. Um, and the change program, because we've got a team of about 900 people, was, was really critical. Um, and if I would not have had all the opinions on the table to help me in the communication of the change, we would only have talk to 10% of the audience. So by getting the opinions in on every um, communication, on every meeting related to the change was really critical, up to the point where I invited all my managers, every people manager in my team, it's about 120 people. And with a group of 120 people, we wrote a change communication of two pages as a total group. We said what needed to be in, what needed to be out, how we needed to phrase it. We did it in two hours with 120. It went out to 900 people and it landed perfectly because we took all the opinions in and everyone had the opportunity to contribute. And it was amazing. Everyone was, was participating. And, and I think if you've got really big organizations, you need to have those opinions. Uh, otherwise, you talk to people that are like you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, the, the KBIs you shared are really impressive. That you doubled the a tripled, yeah. Tripled. Wow. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Yeah, yeah. We did a lot, lot, lot of work on culture, a lot of work on inclusiveness where people feel good, people can mm -hmm. speak up, um, and, and people can contribute their best and be their best. And I think if you unlock people's um it's, I call it the magic, you know, if, if you unlock the magic of an individual and you give him that freedom to do, you know, to being their best self with all their talents. I mean, you're flying as a business. Um, so creating that environment that makes them shine, you know, is, is really critical, uh, really critical. And now your business results will flow. Yeah. 
it's it's so refreshing to speak with someone like you and who totally get gets it you know when you've experienced you know the the positive outcomes of a more inclusive work environment but for some people it's that it's not that obvious and there is when you talk about people and changing people's behaviors and way of seeing things sometimes you well often you, you come across resistance to change and very often people who are you know bigger uh, promoters of inclusion and diversity might come across objections to the topic do you come across objections what's the most common one you know objection and how yeah. do you respond to that you've got one objection which often comes is you know we just need the best person for the job uh which is which is a one that come regularly um but I, I i don't agree with that um i think you need the best person for the team not the best person for the job because if you've got the best person for the team with the right mindset with a growth mindset and it works well in a very diverse team you're gonna get much more out of that person and much more out of the team i think so many people want safe pair of hands if they recruit someone so it's kind of bump on a seat and we give them a computer and we know we can do the job. Well, I think you need to recruit for mindsets and for, you know, the chemistry within the team. You know, what, what's the personality or what's the, the insights that we don't have in a team? And that's the person you need to look for. And often in our businesses, it's not the, you know, white male, 40 years old, you know, from the same college. It's probably someone else, you know, older, younger, other gender, uh, but a good fit for the team that builds the whole team or that drives the whole performance of the team, not only from that job. That's a big one uh, for me. And I, I, I'm very strong in it. I will always recruit for the team, not for the job. And that's what we're saying now much more in the business. Uh, no, that's so powerful what you've just said about we recruit what is missing, what's the personality that's missing, what are the types of insights that are missing. Yeah. And in, I, I really believe the biggest barrier to diversity and inclusion is affinity bias, is the fact that naturally we want to be uh, yeah. surrounded by people who are yeah. just like ourselves. Yeah. In in this simple, it's easy, isn't it? But the simple, the way you you were saying it, it's not to rec the good thing. The, what you should we should be doing is not recruiting for the job, it's recruiting for the team and yeah. looking, finding also what is missing in the team. Yeah, and also I think as leaders, we don't know everything. We can't do everything. We don't have the ability or the competence for everything. So I will always look for people that also complement me, um, because otherwise, if I want to grow and grow my business. I need to have people that have a different perspective on areas where I'm not an expert in. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, it's very tiring once, but it's so good and so much fun. And the results just flow. They just follow. Um, really good, really good. And have you made any mistakes on your inclusion journey? You know, are there any mistakes yes, yes, that yes. you think we should avoid? You know, what, 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 can, what can we learn from you in terms of mistakes to avoid? Um, one of the mistakes is you look at diversity purely from an external perspective. So what's the color, what's the gender, um, you know, what's the age? And, and that's the definition of, of diversity. I think it's all true that those things will make a difference. But it's also the personality. Um, and, you know, it could be the education, could be the background, could be, but you, you, you can have a very um, female man and you can have very male female. So even if you would say I've got 50% female, but they're all in a suit and they talk about football, you don't have that diversity. So you need to look beyond the um, external uh, visible differences. But it's definitely true that, you know, in general, women or people from um, a gay background will bring that different perspective. But it's not just to tick the box exercise. And then the other one is, it's not because you've got a few diverse people around the table that your discussions are diverse and and i've been often a person in a meeting where i felt very excluded so i must maybe the woman in you know the tick the box in the meeting room but i didn't bring myself my best self because i didn't felt um included um and i never spoke up and i think this year i spoke up a number of times and made it very clear if i felt excluded and why i felt excluded 
Um, and I think just putting it on the table in a very constructive way, but a very open way, I think will help role modeling it for, for, for many more because sometimes people exclude you, but it's not conscious. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just making that conscious um, is, is, is important, which I didn't do in the past. That's such a wonderful leadership lesson um, because when you say there are time, there are moments when I feel excluded, and I'm now speaking up. It, yeah. It's kind of you are. It's a vulnerability that you are sharing with the group, yeah. isn't it? And people, yeah. as you mentioned, people don't do it on purpose. They don't realize. And, yeah. and since you've been doing this constructively, as you say, uh, how how's people reaction when you say you know I, I think, hope you included here? Yeah, very positive. Um, I think in the past also we've got a lot of extrovert men. In, in a business like ours and I'm an introvert female so I'm very different in terms of reflection and in terms of communication but I, I use the sentence I'm introvert female regularly in a week multiple times um, but people react positively to it I think a person by nature uh, wants to help another person um, so if he's not conscious you can't blame them if you make it conscious and at least it's a conscious decision to exclude me or not exclude me. You can have a conversation about it. But assuming everyone will understand how you feel is, is wrong. And I think I did that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing because we've known each other for a few years. We've yeah. worked a little bit together on some projects, inclusion in various projects. But I, I wouldn't say of you that you are an introvert person. Yeah. And you still you are an introvert person because you were telling me, you know. Yes. Yeah you know yourself better so we can also yeah. uh, make assumptions we can be so wrong yeah. on our yeah. assumptions yeah. we just need to call it out yeah okay. i've had a few colleagues from a gay background that came to me and they said i don't feel comfortable and i said what's the worst that can happen you know um you know j- just be yourself um the worst that can happen is someone has an opinion about you but you know that's life you know if you're confident enough I mean, you need to believe that there's enough people that will support you and they're now gradually really open about it role modeling it um you know just just be them and the potential you get out of those people is double you know when i feel mm-hmm. evolved and included and appreciated i'll be double as strong than when i'm like felt pushed out so uh, yeah. mm-hmm. and so it's a question that is not it's not at all uh, directly related to inclusion and diversity, but it's a question that I, 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 I'm sure it would be very useful for any, everybody to hear about your answer to that question. It's about, you, you talked about confidence. If you were confident, then you put yourself out there. It's, it's hard sometimes to be confident. Where do you, and that's one of the things that I admire the most on you, is this you know, feeling of confidence that you project. Where, where does it come from? How do you cultivate it? Does it is it naturally that it, are you confident or do you do something to cultivate that feeling of confidence? Um, I think I'm very confident on my values and my core values and I'm very strong on my core values. And the only thing that I want to protect in my life is my core values. And that's where I get my confidence from because if I'm true to my own values, I'm true to myself. Mm-hmm. And if that doesn't work for a certain business or certain environment, then it's, they will not take that confidence away because I will still believe in those values and I think it's probably time for me to go away. Um, but I will not let anyone else judge my values. They can maybe judge my work or judge my projects or judge, and that's fine. They can have an opinion. Everyone has an opinion, but they can't judge my values and I get all my confidence from my values because I'll be a happy person if I live through my values, um, that's, that's, that's where I get it from. Um, and on the other side, I love failing. I love failure uh, because the more you fail, the more you learn and the bigger your success will be in the future. So I'm not scared of failing. I'm not, I don't take judgment personal. I just learn from it the whole time. And I think that also helps me from a mindset perspective to overcome a lot of challenges and a lot of difficulties and keep smiling. You know? Do you mind sharing your values with us? My? Your values? My values. Um, fairness is a really big one. Um, fairness and integrity is a big one. Um, 
a big value uh, which is about caring and loving people that I really like and want to, wanting to care for them. Um, transparency and honesty is also very, very important. Um, so those values I, I will never, never give up. But if I would describe it from a leadership perspective, it's all about collaboration. It's all about inclusiveness, um, transparency, and you know, a really clear direction. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's me. <laughs> and oh, we, in regarding inclusion and diversity, what was the most valuable advice that anyone has ever given to you? It's a, it's a, it's a sentence that is well known. Is you know, just be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Um, uh, I think it's um, what's his name, Oscar Wilde, maybe. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I think it's very powerful because definitely, if we're young, younger, and initially in in a, in a business environment, you try a little bit to copy people that you you know you really look up to, um, and there is that point that you just need to say no. I just need to find my true self now, um, and not let myself be compared to any other one. You could always compare people and. And we'll never bring anything to the table. So no, I, I like that one a lot. Yeah. And everyone should it. Yeah. And what is, when you look at inclusion and diversity, the field, what do you think is trending now? What do you think are the topics of the future? Um, I think a few years ago, it was all about accepting differences. Um, and I remember when I was the first female in a, in a male environment, they were talking about me that it's logic that I had a seat on the table because I was a woman. So it was about accepting me. And I think what we're moving now to is we celebrate differences even more. Um, we start to understand the differences and we start celebrating it and taking it to a bigger advantage. So I think that's very powerful because then it brings a lot of rich um, ideas and a lot of creativity to the table. Um, in the past, it was it's still... You still needed to fit the mold a little bit. I think the mold is done. So it's about how much differences could we bring. Um, so I think that's really, really nice evolution. Oh, okay. From accepting acceptance to celebration, actually, yes. of differences. Yes. yes, yes. Great. And do you have any, any favorite books or quotes or TED Talks? On in this uh, area, I love your TED talks. Your TED talks is definitely on my on my list. Uh, oh, thank you. Which one? <laughs> um, the um, the one with Dark Vader is the recent one, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's the recent yeah. one. And yeah. on the one where you have you talk about the playground. The so, uh, no, I like them. The book I'm reading now is uh, Gender Intelligence. Mm -hmm. I forgot wrote it but it also goes much more about celebrating the differences versus um trying to fit people in and i bought the book for the christmas present of all my colleagues oh that's <laughs> nice <laughs> so it's up to them now to read it and to um to see how they need to you know celebrate more um, and and understand each other even better so that's uh, that's one i will finish in the next few weeks it's funny because you 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 are giving everybody this book as a gift, even though you haven't finished it yes. yet. Yes, yeah. I thought it's, it's I was halfway, and I said this is so eye opening um, mm -hmm. because, for example, one of the things the book says is you don't need to do um, um, women's networks, you don't need to do mentoring of female talent by male leaders. So a lot of things we did in the past, the book is challenging it, and it's just very refreshing to read it. Because, mm -hmm. for example, they say if, if a female uh, future leader is, is mentored by, a, by a, a male man, often he will try to give very male advice and try to help her, you know, navigate through an organization in, in maybe the formal way. Well, we need to evolve how that, that works. So it's very interesting to read. Very interesting. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. And any final thoughts or we can, can we wrap up now? Yeah, we can wrap up. No, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I enjoyed so much our conversation and thanks everyone for listening to us today. It would be great to find out what is your key takeaway from our conversation. So if you can leave your comments, uh, if you liked this episode, please share it, like it, 
um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to find out more about my work and how I, I, I help companies on their inclusion journey, you can visit theclickinternational.com, D-E-C-L-I-C international.com. I hope to see you next time. Until then, embrace differences and make a difference. Thank you so much, Anne. Bye. Thank you.